Good morning everybody, good morning, it's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Marketing. What is marketing? I don't know, I was a communication major. But I do know that starter Pokemon are always an incredibly important element of any Pokemon generation, and although every starter Pokemon is undeniably someone's favorite in terms of promotion and marketing, not all starter Pokemon are equal. Some turn out to be complete duds that the Pokemon company tosses aside, and others end up being merchandise messiahs. And although popularity often leads to marketability, as we'll soon discover in this video, that may not always be the case. So today I'll be going through the years and multiple forms of Pokemon media to find out who are the most promoted starter Pokemon evolution lines. For some of these generations it's incredibly easy, but others will require a much deeper dive. But before we get into it, let's hear from a sponsor of today's video, Likewise TV. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by how much content there is to consume? I know I have, my anime backlog is longer than a Wailord right now. And some shows are only on some platforms and some are on others, I feel like I have to keep a spreadsheet to keep track of it all. Well, luckily, there's a solution for all that now, because Likewise TV is a personalized streaming hub that makes it incredibly easy to find whatever you're looking for. They clearly label which platform you can find your favorite shows on, and they curate lists tailored to your taste so you can keep finding new good stuff to watch. Likewise TV also allows you to connect with friends and family to see what they're watching and recommending. It'll even tell you when a certain show or movie is about to leave a platform so you can catch it before it goes. So stop trying to memorize where all your favorite content is, try out Likewise TV today using the link down in the description. Thank you Likewise TV for sponsoring, let's get back to the video. So Generation 1 should be a fairly obvious one to answer. Pikachu! I mean, he is technically a starter in Yellow and Let's Go, but uh, yeah, that's probably not the answer you're looking for. Yeah, it's Charmander, of the original trio at least. I'll give credit to Game Freak, for as long as they could, they didn't want to show any bias towards Charizard as the fan favorite. And then in 2013, all of their willpower collectively left the building. There's a popular misconception that Charizard became more heavily promoted than the other two starters because Pokemon Red drastically outsold Pokemon Green and Pokemon Blue. But truthfully, if you count Japanese Red as a separate game from International Red, which you should because they are slightly different games, then Red sales numbers are roughly even with Blue and Green. It's just that a lot of sources tend to combine Japanese Red sales figures with International Red, and as a result it gets far more inflated. But in the early days, the Bulbasaur line was nearly equally as promoted as the Charmander line. Obviously, the franchise started as red and green in Japan, with Blue featuring Blastoise in the cover coming out a bit later. In fact, for most of 1997, Bulbasaur looked to be the most promoted of the three, as it appeared in the anime slightly more than Ash's Charmander or Squirtle, and it was used as one of Red's main Pokémon in the Adventures manga. Japanese children also reportedly gravitated more towards Ash's Bulbasaur than his other Pokémon due to its more mature temperament and personality. But the pendulum violently swung in the opposite way in 1998 when Ash's Charizard took the world by storm. Not only did Charizard gain a reputation as Ash's strongest Pokemon, but its fierce, fire-breathing design ended up being far more appealing to the worldwide audience than Bulbasaur and Squirtle's evolutions, who were comparatively dull. Fast forward more than 25 years later and Charizard's popularity is head and shoulders over the other two. It received not one, but two Mega Evolutions in X and Y, received a Gigantamax form months before the other two did, has been used as Red's canon starter in both Origins and Pokemon Masters, Ash's Charizard is now widely considered one of the most popular Pokemon of all time, it is now a fighter in both iterations of Pokémon Tournament, and even in Smash 4 when Squirtle and Ivysaur had to be cut due to a change in design philosophy, Charizard remained as a playable character, making him a fighter in three out of the five Smash Bros. games. And now, if you have a first edition Charizard card lying around somewhere, you may as well use it to buy a house. Certainly, this is a case where the popularity of the design likely drove the Pokemon Company to market Charizard far more than the other Gen 1 starters. It's still a pretty obvious one though, so why don't we move on to something a little more interesting. Gen 2 starters are weird. Out of all the generations, this is probably the least promoted trio, so finding the most marketable of them is going to be tough. You don't really see animal crackers shaped like Totodile anywhere, so get ready, this is gonna be a deep dive. Starting with the anime, because let's face it, the anime is basically a vehicle for toy producers to know which Pokemon are the most popular, let's not deny that. We can directly compare these starters by how many appearances each of them have, since Ash caught all three of them in Johto. 
Ash's Cyndaquil slash Quilava has appeared in 48 total episodes, Ash's Totodile appeared in 66 episodes, and Ash's Chikorita slash Bayleaf appeared in 77 episodes. Outside of just Ash's though, Chikorita is by far the most used of the three starters in the anime, being owned by Casey, Vincent, Lyra, Horus, and Silver. Not that Silver, this random Silver from Chronicles. Chikorita also makes two appearances in the Super Smash Bros. series, being summonable from a Pokeball in both Melee and Brawl. Discounting trophies and spirits, Cyndaquil only appears in Melee, and Totodile does not appear in the series at all. So, ironically enough, despite being one of the least popular starters of all time, Chikorita was originally marketed quite a bit more than the other two. However, over time, the winds have certainly shifted in Cyndaquil's favor. For starters, X-Bow the Typhlosion is one of Gold's ace Pokémon from the manga, it is Jimmy's signature Pokémon in the Chronicle series, and in Pokémon Masters it is paired with Ethan. Though, admittedly, Ethan doesn't carry the same legendary weight as Red, plus Chris and Lyra at least use the other starters. Chikorita definitely had the anime unlock for a long time, but even that shifted in the Diamond and Pearl series, when Dawn obtained her own Cyndaquil and Ashes ended up evolving just before the Sinnoh League started. And when it comes to the trading card game, Typhlosion has had 27 unique cards printed, whereas Feraligator has had 19, and Meganium has only had 15. The Chikorita line is also the only of the three to not be printed in the Generation 8 era, as of recording this video. But of course, the most notable ace up the Cyndaquil line's sleeve is their recent appearance in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Not only is Cyndaquil featured as a starter Pokemon in this game, but Typhlosion also receives a brand new Hisuian form. Which, I would say, at least for the time being, cements the Cyndaquil line as the most promoted of the Gen 2 starters. Honestly, this one makes sense. Cyndaquil and Typhlosion strike that great balance that a lot of popular starters do. The base form is cute and simple, and the final form is still cool, but rather clean looking. Chikorita is also rather cute, but over time the Pokemon Company and Game Freak probably realized that it severely lagged behind the other two in terms of popularity, and with all due respect to Feraligator fans, believe me, I like him too, he just doesn't really have that clean, slick look to him that so many other marketable Pokemon do. He's a big, wrinkly alligator with weird growths and spikes all over him. Do I need to remind you about the butt? Yeah, the Cyndaquil family still isn't that much more marketed than the other two, but there's still a reason why Cyndaquil of all things ended up being chosen for Arceus. The Generation 3 starters are a fan favorite crowd, and like Gen 2, it is very hard to determine which of the three is the most promoted, but we'll still try. We ended with TCG last time, so why not start with it this time around? In terms of number of cards printed, Blaziken leads the pack with 32 unique cards, next is Sceptile with 23, and then Swampert with 19. Blaziken is also the only one of the three to be printed in every generation since its debut. Sceptile has not yet been printed in Gen 8, and Swampert somehow missed out on Gen 5. Even if you count the number of EX cards and their variants over the years, like Level X, GX, VMAX, etc., Blaziken has 8, Sceptile has 6, and Swampert has 4. Despite not belonging to Ash, May's Blaziken actually outnumbers Ash's Sceptile by number of anime appearances too, with 101 episodes to Sceptile's 96. As for Brock's Marshtomp, do we even really need to compare? 67. It's 67 episodes. Poor Swampert was also the only one of the three to not have its Mega Evolution prominently featured in the XY anime. Of course, outside of the main cast, Blaziken was one of the first Generation 3 Pokémon featured in the anime, as Harrison's Blaziken defeated Ash's Charizard in the Johto League Silver Conference. In other games, Blaziken and Sceptile both appear as fighters in Pokémon, whereas Swampert is curiously absent, and Torchic is the only of the three to appear in the Super Smash Bros. series as a Pokéball, while the other two are merely trophies. Honestly, these results were pretty surprising given how overwhelmingly popular Mudkip has become through memes and pop culture. But in terms of official media, Pokemon Masters is the only game where it debatably shines better than the other two, since you can at least get May with Mega Swampert. But at the end of the day, it's still Pokemon Masters. We're talking about, like, fifth tier relevancy here. I would have also thought that Mudkip would have the most merchandise of the three, but nope, that award also goes to Torchic. So while I guess Mudkip is really cute and popular among fans, the Pokemon companies simply don't see Swampert nearly as marketable as the other two. While the competition between Blaziken and Sceptile is certainly close, I would say that Blaziken's popularity in the TCG, the fact that it got a Mega Evolution before the other two, and Torchic's large presence in merchandising give that evolution line the edge here. 
But while Torchic's popularity in merchandising is large, it doesn't come anywhere close to the next Pokemon we're talking about, who is probably the most marketable starter ever, not counting evolutions. Piplup. Just go on PokemonCenter.com and check out how much more Piplup merch there is compared to any other starter Pokemon. It's more than double in most cases! And as we know, Pokemon makes the bulk of its yearly income on merchandise alone, so this is arguably the most important battle to win for any generation starter Pokemon. Piplup has an ungodly amount of representation in the anime as well, being owned by Dawn, Barry, Kenny, and Verity. Compared to Turtwig and Chimchar, it's not even close. In fact, Piplup appears in almost every single episode of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, a feat that any Pokemon not named Pikachu will rarely ever accomplish. Empoleon is the only Sinnoh starter to be featured in Pokémon Tournament, and Piplup is the only one of the three to make a physical appearance in the Super Smash Bros. series, being featured as a Pokéball in Brawl. In the TCG, Torterra has 10 unique cards, and Fernape has 12, and Empoleon has 16. So far, it is the only one to be featured as a V-card in Gen 8, and it was also featured as a Break card in Gen 6. For reference, poor Torterra hasn't had a level X or anything better since the original base set of Diamond and Pearl. I think I speak for a lot of people, including myself, when I say that Infernape is commonly seen as the most popular of the final starter evolutions from this generation. But even a Pokemon as radically popular as Infernape isn't able to compete with a merchandising machine that Piplup is. So what makes Piplup so insanely marketable? Once again, simple design. It's made up of nothing but circles, which makes it easy for kids to recognize, and above all else, it's an insanely adorable baby penguin. The other two had no shot out of the gate. And with Piplup being so popular, Empoleon is just kinda along for the ride, though admittedly it and the other Sinnoh starter evolutions are really cool. I know I didn't talk much about the mid-stage evolutions for them, or any other Pokemon in this video for that matter, but let's be honest. When other than Grovile from Mystery Dungeon have you had any strong feelings towards a mid-stage starter? But anyway, with the sheer amount of info that needs to be collected to make these videos possible, and the time constraints of uploading every week, we'll have to come back to Gens 5 through 8 next week. Of course, if you want to see how the newer starters fare against one another, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. I'll see you guys next time.